secondary course government of tamil nadu english medium today we are going to learn about the subject accountancy chapter 1 accounts from incomplete books of records in this chapter we are going to learn about what is incomplete records meaning features its limitations how does it differ from double entry then we are going to find out profit and loss under this incomplete books through statement of profit then we are going to see how we are going to find out profit and loss then meaning of statement of affairs then its format last we are going to see the difference between statement of affairs and balance sheet this is what we are going to see today now coming back what do you mean by incomplete records we know in this chapter already during plus 2 we must have learned the double entry system <coughs> meaning of incomplete records under this we are going to record only one aspect of a transaction those records are the method of accounting in which only one aspect of a transaction is recorded is called incomplete books it is incomplete unscientific and uh, it is also called single entry system of bookkeeping because we know there are two aspects debit aspect as well as credit aspect are to be recorded but in this incomplete records we record any one aspect or sometimes we don't record <coughs> some transactions are recorded fully in incomplete records we record some transactions fully that is example cash received from customers and cash paid to creditors they are fully recorded some transactions are partially recorded like expenses paid they are recorded in cash book alone some record transactions are not at all recorded what are they sometimes there is both debit and credit aspect both are omitted to be recorded now how a incomplete book look like let us see nature it is unscientific unsystematic of recording transactions accounting principles and accounting standards are not maintained types of accounts maintained is very important what are the various accounts you maintain in double entry system personal account real account then nominal account these three accounts are recorded but here in the incomplete records we record only cash book and personal accounts we don't record real account that is apart from cash we don't record any other asset and nominal account we don't maintain lack of uniformity the users of this accounting they don't maintain a standardized way of recording there is no uniformity in maintaining the books of accounts under single entry system financial statements do not reflect true and fair value why do you prepare financial account statements these statements are prepared at the end of the accounting period to find out the result of the business and to know the financial position of the business at the end of the accounting period profit and loss account trading and profit and loss account gives you the result of business and the balance sheet shows the financial position of the business but here since we don't maintain all the three types of accounts it is not possible to find out the exact result and we don't get the 
fair, true and fair value of the business. Suitability. To whom it is suitable? Incomplete records are normally suitable to the small traders where he cannot maintain a separate accounting department to maintain the accounting system. And double entry system, maintaining records under double entry system is little costly and it needs professional knowledge in recording accounts. Mixing up of personal and business finance. The owner, since he is a small trader, often mixes his own finance with the business finance, making it cumbersome. So these are the various features of incomplete records. Now, now next, we will go to the limitations. Limitations. Limitation means shortcomings. Once you maintain under incomplete records, what are the limitations we face? Let us see. Lack of proper maintenance of records. Every business has to maintain the records and produce the financial statements from it. It is unscientific and unsystematic way of maintaining records since real and nominal accounts are not maintained. Difficulty in preparing trial balance. Why do you prepare trial balance? Trial balance is prepared to find out the arithmetical accuracy of the books of accounts, whether we maintain correctly or not under double entry system. So since we don't maintain real and nominal accounts, we won't be able to find out the arithmetical accuracy of the books of accounts. Difficulty in ascertaining true profitability of the business. Since there are very less number of accounts and the profit found out under incomplete records are just an estimate, not a real profit. Difficulty in ascertaining the financial position. Since all the real accounts are not maintained, we won't be able to get the real financial position. Financial position means what? That is, it's a statement of assets and liabilities on a particular date. We don't maintain real account, so we don't get the all the assets into a statement. Errors and frauds cannot be detected easily. Under single entry system, it is very difficult to find out errors committed by the accountant and it cannot be rectified also. Unacceptable to the government authorities. Tax authorities, as per law, they approve only the books of accounts which are maintained under double entry system and since this is an incomplete record, they don't take into account at all. Those records are incomplete since they don't approve it. So these are the limitations. Now let us see how we find out profit or loss made if the records are maintained under single entry system. How do you ascertain the profit? Under single entry system, we prepare a statement called statement of affairs and we find out the capital on a particular date. The capital of the business at the beginning and the capital at the end, both are compared. If the opening capital if the closing capital is more than the opening capital, what he has invested, then it is told as he has made a profit. If the closing capital is less than what he has invested at the starting of the business year, then it is loss. So just we compare the closing capital with the opening capital and we ascertain profit or loss made. That's what given there. And uh, with the available missing, with the available data, the missing figures can be found out 
and then final accounts also can be prepared. So there are some more records and accounts they are to be prepared and then we can still prepare final accounts. But under incomplete records those figures are just an estimate. <coughs> this is how we calculate profit or loss under statement of affairs method. The difference between closing and opening capital is termed as profit or loss. Due adjustments are made with the withdrawal, withdrawal of capital from the business that is drawing made by the partner or sorry owner. Taking the closing capital as a base drawing of the year should be added and then this because drawing would reduce the closing capital. Additional capital introduced during the year should be subtracted. This because additional capital introduced would have increased the closing capital. This will give the adjusted closing capital that is the closing adjusted closing capital is compared with the opening capital to arrive at the profit or loss. This is a flow chart showing how the profit or loss made in the business which maintains incomplete records. Ascertaining opening capital by preparing statement of affairs on that particular date, opening date. Ascertaining the closing capital at the end of the accounting period after adjusting for depreciation, bad debts, etc. And uh, add the drawings with the closing capital. Detect the additional capital introduced from the adjusted closing capital and then ascertain the profit or loss. Now, let us see how it is mathematically calculated. It is given in your book. Capital at the end of the year is added with the drawings. The total is found out. Less the additional capital. It is called adjusted closing capital. Reduce the opening capital. If it is a positive figure, then it is profit. If it is a negative figure, then it is termed as loss. This is how we calculate profit or loss under incomplete records. Now we are talking about statement of affairs. What is statement of affairs? Statement of affairs is a statement prepared on a particular date with the assets and liabilities to find out the capital. We know from plus one accounting equation assets are equal to liability plus capital. Now from this itself we can find out capital. Capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. So we have assets, we have liabilities on a particular date. Subtract the liabilities from assets the remainder will be capital. So, with the opening assets and liabilities, we can calculate opening capital. With the closing assets and closing liabilities, we can calculate closing capital. Now, what is prepared is statement of affairs. Statement of affairs is a statement prepared on a particular date to find out capital of the business. It is a statement showing balance of assets and liabilities. It is prepared. When it is prepared, it is prepared from incomplete records to find out the capital on a particular date. It resembles a balance sheet. It looks like a balance sheet. Accounting equation. From the accounting equation, we deduce capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. Although the statement of affairs is a list of assets and liabilities, it is not called balance sheet. It is not called balance sheet because it is different from balance sheet. In balance sheet, we do not balance. It is a statement of assets and liabilities. But statement of affairs is a statement prepared to find out capital. Now, let us see the format of statement of affairs. How it does it look like? It looks like a balance sheet, but it is a statement of affairs. We write assets on the right side, write the liabilities on the left side, 
balance it out first add the assets bring it here then balance it out we find out the balancing figure like in ledger accounts how do you prepare the closing balance of the ledger account same way here we balance and then find out the capital on the particular date now let us see the difference between statement of affairs and balance sheet statement of affairs and balance sheet statement of affairs under single uh, incomplete books balance sheet is prepared under double entry system of accounting objective why do we prepare purpose of preparation it is to find out capital balance sheet it is to know the financial position accounting system incomplete books of accounts or you can say single entry system balance sheet is prepared under double entry system basis of preparation on what basis it is prepared it is prepared on the basis of available assets and liability the value of available assets and liabilities it is exclusively on the basis of ledger accounts maintained that is balance sheet we have a ledger and from that balance we prepare balance sheet reliability how far it is reliable incomplete that is in uh, statement of affairs is not reliable balance sheet is very much reliable missing items difficult to trace the missing items or omitted items here balance sheet we can very well find out and errors can be traced so with that we come to the end of the session now let us recapitulate again what we learned today accounts from incomplete records incomplete records means it is those records under which only one aspect of a transaction is recorded and it is unscientific and systematic and inappropriate it is normally used by small traders features how it looks like it is unscientific and only one aspect of a transaction is recorded and it is not reliable and it is not accepted by government and it is suitable to only small traders limitations under limitations we covered it is lack of proper maintenance of records it is unscientific and systematic of method of making records real and nominal accounts are not maintained it is difficult to prepare trial balance under this method difficulty in ascertaining the profitability of the business difficulty in ascertaining the financial position of the business errors cannot be detected unacceptable to the government authorities and other authorities that is tax authorities so these are the limitations how does single entry and double entry differ let us see there are 10 point this you must have covered in previous class that is plus one recording of transactions under double entry we maintain all the three types of accounts here we maintain only cash and personal transactions types of account personal account real account nominal account all are maintained here it is real and nominal account are only maintained preparation of trial bands it is possible here under double entry it is not possible under single entry system or you can say incomplete records determination of pro true profit and loss we can very well find out exact profit made by the business or result of operation here it is just an estimate we can calculate approximately determination of financial position is possible here it is difficult we cannot since balance sheet is not prepared it is difficult to ascertain the financial position suitability suitable for all type of businesses incomplete records are suitable for small traders or small business reliability it is reliable and it is less reliable and it's not reliable acceptability it is accepted by government and tax authorities it is not accepted so these are the various differences and 
accounts from income how do you find out profit and loss if it is maintained under incomplete records we have to find out because the businessman cannot switch over to double entry system small business cannot switch over so how do they find out let us that is they find out the profit or loss and financial position of the business also the organizations which maintain incomplete records based on the available information whatever information we have with that we prepare profit or loss and balance sheet the difference between the closing capital and the opening capital is termed as profit if the closing capital is more than the opening capital it is called profit if the closing capital is less than the opening capital it is termed as loss the closing capital is adjusted for additional capital drawing and other adjustments this is the this is how the work is done opening capital plus additional capital plus profit or loss minus drawing will give you the closing capital or simply we can find out by a formula just we can make a note of it c plus c plus c plus d that is closing capital plus drawing opening capital plus additional capital plus profit or minus loss in the this formula also can be used to find out profit or loss made here we can arrive at the profit by c plus d add this less the additional capital and then less the opening capital you get profit if it is a positive figure then it is profit this is given here so this is given in a vertical format here i written it on a horizontal format horizontal way. you can calculate on both the ways so closing capital plus drawing is equal to opening capital plus additional capital plus profit so bringing leaving the profit there bringing this tool to this side we can write it on a vertical format for easy calculation closing capital plus drawing minus the additional capital minus the opening capital if it is a positive figure then it is called as profit if it is a negative figure it is termed as loss this is how we find out profit or loss sometimes we need to calculate the missing figures of this five items given there we need to find out sometimes closing capital sometimes opening capital like that the illustrations are self explanatory and the corresponding exercise parts corresponding to the illustrations we are given some questions are there which are easy to understand we can work it out and see this is how also this all method also we can adopt in preparing or you can say finding out profit and then how do you prepare statement what is statement of affairs the meaning of statement of affairs it is a statement showing the assets and liabilities on a particular date like balance sheet the assets are shown on the right side and the liabilities are shown on the left side and it is balanced for what purpose we find out the statement of affairs it is to find out the capital of the business on a particular date the very important is particular date it is it resembles a balance sheet it looks like a balance sheet and the capital is nothing but assets minus liability equal to capital so it is also a said statement of assets and liabilities but it is not a balance sheet this is how a statement of affairs look like and uh, difference between a statement of affairs and balance sheet objective for what it is prepared to find out capital for what balance sheet is prepared to find out the financial position accounting system statement of affairs is prepared under 
incomplete books balance sheet is prepared under double entry system basis on the basis of records available on the basis of ledger balances reliability not reliable reliable missing items it is difficult to trace easily errors can be found out thank you very much students thank you